Hello folks, we've got a new update to Idle Heroes, which has brought across some pretty decent changes. It's giving us ways of getting new treasure train items all across the many stores in the game, which are exclusively available by basically playing the game. So that's pretty cool, a way that we can accumulate some of those cool treasure train rewards. On top of that, we've seen some quality of life improvements, changes to the Celestial Island, and all in all, this is a fantastic new update for Idle Heroes. So take a look here, for example, I am in the Realms Gate and I have just completed a Smash. And you'll see everything here seems pretty normal. I'm getting all the usual stuff from a Smash. But on top of that, I'm getting lucky treasure chests. And these treasure chests are pretty much a way of you getting this item here called the Hellfire Horns, which is one of many new items that have been added to the game. So if I back out of here, thanks to my smash being completed, I go ahead and pick myself a new hero, start exploration, and I path plan. We would probably just want to go and find where we've got ourselves a mine, so I'm going to go up on this way here. But if I go ahead and smash, I might even pick up some more of the stuff. Okay, I didn't. I think that was because I completed a stage. That wouldn't be surprising if every time you complete this, you get that item, depending on your Void Corruption level. Either way, you'll see so many of these new chests popping up, because they don't just give you the Hellfire Horns. They give you many other items as well. And you can see from that, I got five shards, which is pretty unlucky. If you go ahead and look at the treasure train, we still have the Alien Dessert. We have the Forgotten Artifacts. We have the Hero Tokens, but a new section called the Arcane Jewelry has appeared. You can see I've even got one of these already called the Mythical Puppy Brooch, and this just gives attack and HP. This is available for people who are VIP players, who are on the VIP tracker. If you spend money, you get VIP points, and as well as the usual VIP rewards, you will get copies of this Mythical Puppy Brooch, which you can use to build this item. So the fact that I've managed to get it to three star is pretty good. Now, if we look at all of these, they'll all give specific bonuses to different game modes. So this one here called the Midnight Ember is giving control immunity for Starland Arena. So you would assume that this one can be obtained as a reward from Starland. If you take a look at Dawn Splendor, you can see that this one is giving us rewards for Force War. So engaging with Force War is going to get us rewards from that as well. And you see this one called the Magic Merit. And this is rewarding us for engaging with Star Arena, Free Team Up Arena, Trial of Champion, and Interdimensional Arena. The idea, I imagine, is we are going to be given these progressively just for engaging with the different game modes, which makes a lot of sense. Because if you go ahead and look as well, the arena store itself has actually added these things in. So where we would normally be buying profit orbs or even wishing coins, we now have the opportunity to pick up this. We can get ourselves a lucky treasure chest. So I'm going to go ahead and buy how many of those can I get? Is it, is, am I limited to 10, I think? And then it'll be uh, maxed out. Yeah, so I can only buy 10, then it gets locked up. And I'm pretty much going to be doing that from now on because of all of this stuff, I think that item is going to be pretty valuable because the more attack and HP I can get on my heroes, the better from the treasure train. So I'm now going to go into my chests. We're going to go and see if I can find that item. There it is. It's down at the bottom there. Pull out as many of these as we can. We got 13. Now, I don't think 13 is going to be enough to build one of these things. We can have a look, though, if we go to the quip operation. Uh, no. But of course, progressively buying these things will be useful for our accounts. Same goes for Seal Land as well. We've got a currency for the lucky treasure chest Infernal Emblem. So regardless of how you're engaging with this, whether it's with light and dark or with normal factions, you can actually pick up these. So it's good to engage with both because you can go ahead and buy on this timer five each time. So that's going to put those resources to good use. So a little thing you guys can bear in mind is you can go ahead and pick up these new treasure train items just by playing the game, which means you don't have to spend money on treasure train tickets. These ones are pretty much available for everybody. So let's go back to my bag. Let's go to my chests. Let's open 10 of these. Will I get anything good? No, 13 again. So you need quite a large number of them. The drop rates aren't that great, but progressively over time, we will pick them up. So I've currently shown you a few ways to pick up these, and if you look across the game, there are many more hidden throughout as rewards. So if you go and look, for example, that one we looked at, the boosts into Dimensional Arena, Trial of the Champion and stuff like that. If we look at into Dimensional Arena, go to the rewards, and you'll actually see that depending on how high you get in this, you will get yourself the Magic Merit item. So that's pretty cool. That's another way to get one of these items. Same thing goes as well with the other ones. So let's go take a look at them to see if we can find where they're all hiding. So 
We've already assumed the one for Starland is going to be happening when we get Starland. The one for Force Wars, same thing. This one we found, that's going to be IDA. This one you get for being a VIP. So this one here is for Aspen Dungeon. One would assume that if you're fighting through Purgatory or maybe for clearing different stages of Aspen Dungeon, you will get yourself the Divine Amulet. So I need to wait for Aspen Dungeon to open to see when that comes through. Tower of Dream, again, when Tower of Dream unlocks this weekend, we'll be able to go ahead and fight that. I'm imagining depending on the level of Tower of Dream you're doing, you'll get more of those chests, which you can open up and of course get rewards for doing. We've already found this one. This one's available in the Seal Land. This one we found as well, that's available in Realm's Gate. This one, the Immortal Totem, is available in the Void Vortex, which again is another one of these areas of the game which is currently locked. It's not here on the reward path there, so one would imagine that you get those chests every time you smash through the Void Vortex. Whether it's limited to Vanquisher or Dominator, we won't know until five or six hours time. So yeah, curious about that one. It may encourage people even more to go ahead and be Dominator and Vanquisher quickly on their account. On top of that, guys, let's go take a look at the other ones we can go pick up. We've got ourselves... I think there's got, there's got to be way more, right? This one here doesn't say where that one's actually available. So the Iron Badge... I'm just, we're just going to have to wait for that one to show up wherever that's going to be. That might be an event reward or something. Uh, same with this one. This just gives attack and HP. This one we found. It's available in the arena store. And this last one here, again, gives attack and HP. So there's no clues as to where those ones will be. Um... I don't even know if it says where you can grab it. No, okay, so... Yeah, we're just gonna have to try and see where those things pop up. They might be event rewards. That could be a possible thing. Uh, they could be available in marketplaces that are yet to appear. I currently can't find them. I looked through the glory challenge. I don't think they're available in here. That'd be pretty cool if they added them in. Um, but I don't think they're available in the glory challenge. No. Uh, they might add them to a glorious relic store. That might be a fun way uh, to get use out of our glorious relics. But that's, again, unlikely. Unless they've added them to Void Campaign. There's no way they're dropping from Void Campaign. That would be mad. Should we double check? No, they're not, but that'd be pretty cool if it dropped from Void Campaign, wouldn't it? I wonder if maybe one of these chests is it? No, that's Elena's core, isn't it? So that one? No, that's the new guy's core. So yeah, I have no idea unless it's Hollow Campaign, but they haven't added any drop stuff to that. Yeah, so it's not available from Void Campaign, which honestly is kind of a good thing because if it was available in Void Campaign, that would be just a little bit annoying. Um, but yeah, all in all, you have to just basically play the game, engage with the different game modes, and you will pick up more of those things. Eventually, you'll collect enough of those pieces to go ahead and build one, and eventually you'll look like me and start to accumulate some of these things. Obviously, this is the easiest one to get because all you have to do is spend money. Now, I think the reason DH Games has added this was kind of similar for the reason they added the Soul Temple reward scheme. It incentivizes you to engage with the different areas of the game and encourages new players to beat the game more efficiently and quickly so that they can accumulate rewards quicker because knowing how to get these treasure train items without spending money can be quite nice because pretty much all the first three sections are very paywalled so these ones here the fact that you can get them by engaging with the game and, and of course improving the stats of your heroes quite significantly for a lot of early players that is uh you will see definitely good rewards for doing so and an incentive of course for players to particularly engage with the game modes that they may have found boring. Maybe they don't do interdimensional arena as much. Maybe Force War is something people just aren't invested in. So by getting these new items available to us, it encourages us to actually go ahead and try. Same as well, the strongest two are Starland Arena and Force War, two of the newer game modes DH Games brought out, which are game modes that people are really struggling to find enjoyable. So perhaps this added incentive can add to the fun. Now let's go and draw our attention to the Celestial Island. Here's another thing that's changed. We can now have more things processing at once and the level of your furnace will improve the processing you can do. As well, the furnace can be taken to a much higher level. And hopefully by this point, you've also noticed things are no longer thousand thousands. They're actually millions. Even my gold up here says 637.69 million and my void stones have a comma. So DH Gamers have finally improved the quality of life for us all by giving us numbers. Now, by taking this, by the way, to level 13, oh, or even, oh, 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 there's loads of good stuff here. Right, let's go in. I can start with my Void Stones building Stellar Shards. This is amazing. Some people will want to go for Space Gems, but I'm just going to go all in on Stellar Shards. We have 12 of them in, and we're just going to get loads of this stuff going. It means every single day I can have a ton of Stellar Shards processing, which is absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to absolutely fill this up with as many Stellar Shards as possible. And I will just let that timer go and go and go and go. And the more Stellar Shards we can get, 
the better. Now, that might seem like a lot of work to fill in all these things. Well, fortunately, DH games have noticed that. So if you go to the Idle Master, and if you go to your Celestial Island, you can go to Fusion Settings, and you can just fill this up. We just want to confirm that I'm just going to pretty much go for all the fusioning in Stellar Shards. That means if I just press Perform All now, it's probably going to fill that up. Let's go take a look. Oh, well, obviously, it's just done a ton of stuff for me anyway, because Idle Master does that. But if I now go take a look at the Celestial Island, has that filled up with Stellar Shards? It absolutely has. So progressively over time, it's going to get all those stellar shards for me. And of course, I can use them to advance my account. So my advice, if you're a new player who's staring at the Celestial Island, is you should absolutely, if you haven't already, go ahead and prioritize upgrading your Void Mines. These are going to give you the resource you need to actually progress the whole Celestial Island. On top of that, I would encourage you, if you can, to get gems up because gems are just really, really valuable. And then after that, I think you can actually just improve your town hall to make those things stronger. I don't think you necessarily need to be improving the gold straight away. And then what you want to do is you want to get this furnace to a level where you can start producing stellar shards as quickly as possible because stellar shards are a huge resource for making progress. That said, though, it can get very expensive on your void stones. So you might find yourself not having enough resources to level up, let's say, the ones that give dust or the ones that give gold. So just be mindful that you will need void stones to get your prosperity up and improve your production across the board. But if you are at a point where void stones are something you have quite a lot of, you definitely want to consider upgrading the furnace so that you can get those stellar shards coming in. Kind of weird now that we're not going to be prioritizing Celestial Island resources, but that's just the way it goes. So all in all, a pretty solid update to Idle Heroes. It's really good to see that they've added in new items for the treasure train. Even though they don't give too much power, it's still a nice boost and a good encouragement to play the game. The Celestial Island improvements are fantastic because it means we can finally stockpile multiple things building at the same time, which I know a lot of people are asking for. And the same thing with being added to Idle Master. Oh, that is such a lifesaver. On top of that, of course, the new numbers, just the simple addition of commas, full stops and millions instead of thousands is actually actually very, very welcome. So folks, let me know what you think about this update in the comment section down below. I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe for more Idle Heroes content, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, though, guys, have a good week and happy idling.